Thank you, my friend. Come with me. Yeah, I'm curious to hear what's going on tonight. What, excuse Thank me. Thank you. Come with me. Hello. Come with me. Captain. How are you? Captain. Uncovering the secrets and exposing the lies. Freedomsphoenix.com. To a much more populated street called Long Street. And uh, we felt that maybe it was the best place to be able to show both the public and the police what watching the police is all about. Busy area, entertainment area, bars and stuff, a lot of people on foot. We walked up and down the street a couple times and then uh, we saw down the street some blue lights and so we hoofed it down there. They're makeshift checkpoints where they just pull people over and search their vehicles and pull them out. You're a cop. No, no, no. Can you read this? I record cops. I just uh, want to make sure folks with badges aren't hurting other people. Excuse me? I just want to make sure people with badges don't hurt other people. Dude, thank you so much for doing this. Yeah, man. Have a good night, man. Yeah. So that's RC116. License plate on this vehicle, BSH105B as a boy. We have another vehicle over here, 10111. We have, uh, they pulled over some taxis, they pulled over non-taxis. Taking some B-roll from the east side of the street, and they were pulling cars over on the west side, so we crossed over the west side and we were just filming for a little bit. I saw one individual who was, was not in a police costume, but just in plain clothes, get into a vehicle that had been stopped after the passengers and driver of that car exited. He got in the driver's seat and sort of started driving towards our location about 20 feet in front of him. Yeah, I'm curious to hear what's going on tonight. What, excuse Thank me. Thank you. Come with me. Hello. Hello. Come with me. Captain. How are you? Captain. Sir, uh, I have a right to film. I put videos for Captain. Yeah, yeah. I have a right to film, sir. No, no, no. I have a right to film. This is, this is a public space. Yeah, yeah, he just, no, no, we just no. But, but why? Yeah, why are you filming? No, we just saw you guys doing it. We just we're just checking and to make sure everything's okay. Over there. Sir, sir, this is my. Yeah. Police employees often talk about this force escalation and they say, oh, we meet force with this amount of force and it's like this continuum. And right away, like Jacob and I are peaceful, standing there in public filming, and right away we're coming at it with this level of force, which was totally uncalled for. And then I, I got to give Pete a lot of respect because while he did not resist physically in any way that I, I would ever perceive as, uh, as wrong, he did put up a fight. He was not going to give that camera up just because some thug was telling him that he had to. It seemed clear to me that these folks were used to people just right away obeying whatever they dictated. They were trying to push me, physically push me into a vehicle, and I said, listen guys, I, I didn't do anything wrong tonight. I have the right to film. This is a public space. You're public employees. They uh, demanded my ID. I did give them my name. I was held there for about 20 minutes um, with threats of being brought to central booking for creating a riotous situation. I felt it was important to get what video documentation I had of these officers um, as far away from them as possible should I have to identify them later. Because I didn't know which district you were being taken to. Um, I didn't know anything about these cops, but I know I had their identities, and I know that that would uh, stand for something in the long run. So I disappeared into the darkness of the night uh, uh, via a taxi, and I made my way back to our spot. I immediately got in touch with our lawyer, and I also got in touch with our contacts on the ground. I would just respond to their questions or their demands with questions. And you know, that eventually, you know, it, it takes a while, but it can diffuse the situation. So that's, that's what I kept trying to do. And this individual, D-E-J-E-H-A-R, he, he kept trying to get me to delete the footage, that clip. And I, I don't want to delete the footage because then it makes it much easier for them to put in the report or whatever to say, oh yeah, and then this guy deleted the footage upon request or he went ahead and did it. You know, they can skew it however they want. So I, I didn't delete the footage, but this individual did, so it's on him. And the, the only camera I saw on Long Street was where Jacob and I had initially been standing, right above us. So I said, you guys are filming this right now. 
and you're saying we don't have the right to film this interaction, just to point out all hypocrisies. Let's just keep it very clear. These cops were not light on Pete. They put their hands on him, they were pushing him around, and they were threatening him. My complexion would have been different, or I had a different accent, and my, my the fact that I didn't immediately comply with the demands would have probably resulted in much more force. And, you know, I, I'm sure I would have, instead of being pushed uh, into this, uh, attemptedly pushed into the vehicle by him and his, a couple of his colleagues, I'm sure I would have been roughly, even more roughly pushed and, uh, you know, maybe brought around the, the alley, maybe, I don't know, maybe brought to the cage and, and dealt with there. But I definitely did feel like the fact that he, at the end of the, the 20 minutes, you know, noted, we want you as an American to make sure you have a good time here. That seemed to me to afford another level of protection, like he viewed me as, as having different standard of rights or at least he didn't want to employ his more heavy-handed tactics. After it was all said and done and we were able to reunite back at our, at our, our crash spot, then uh, you know you had the great idea to, to let's say, hey, let's, let's work on recovering this footage. We sat down, we got in touch with Carlos Miller of Photography is Not a Crime and made sure that we were uh, doing what we had to as far as taking these uh, steps to recover this data. Obviously there's no point in telling anybody about about rights that they have when the police don't respect them. And so I think this is a good time, a moment in time for us to, uh, to flex a little bit. Uh, we will put this video out and we will make it live to the world. And uh, we'll start uh, from precinct to precinct, uh, getting into their chain of command and educating them not only about our right to observe, but about the consequences of not respecting those rights. Because when you start destroying people's cameras, you not only show that you are a destructive, corrupt police force, but you imply that you have something to hide. Sure. And uh, all that stuff adds up to, a, to an institution that people can't trust. And, um, well, what can you say? If you can't trust, I mean, what use are you?